Welcome back Acura Bike Project fans. We left off the last video with fabricating those main vertical frame side rails, which basically completes that frame extension. With the new frame extension done and the engine fit tested, I could move on and back to the part I started before the new welding table and the new frame jig, the engine reduction cage. This component is one of the more difficult parts of the build and not something you'll typically see in other builds, either Canada bike replicas or motorcycles. Since my rear wheel is significantly larger than a typical motorcycle wheel, you can't just directly connect the engine to the wheel. All the gearing ratios and torque will be off. Additionally, I'm not able to use the shaft drive that was on the CX's for this, because its basic function is to reduce the engine output RPMs, and it sort of looks like a cage, and I'm not clever at coming up with names, I called it the engine reduction cage. The engine reduction cage is basically a frame made of 3 quarter inch steel square tubing with a few vertical plates that hold the bearings which hold the shafts, and some sprockets and gears on those shafts. It takes the initial output of the engine, which is in the rear right, and spins a much larger sprocket on the left side through a chain. This sprocket is directly connected to the larger half of a bevel gear pair via a shaft. The bevel gear pair turns the output 90 degrees and is directly connected to a sprocket, and that sprocket drives the final rear wheel sprocket. So we have four sprockets, two chains, and a pair of bevel gears. I can easily alter the sprockets to change the drive ratio as well, although altering the bevel gears is much more difficult. First, I'm going to need the engine output shaft, which this motor didn't actually have. So I popped off the back of the motor, bought a spare output shaft off eBay, and then went ahead and installed it. And with that, I could return to actually making the engine reduction cage. This will be the third time I tried to start making this. I cut and cleaned the individual bars, lined them up on a drawing placed on my welding table, clamped it down, and tack welded the assembly up. I did the first two layers separately, and then stacked those up with spacers and welded those together with the corner tubes. Some creative clamping was required, turning the whole cage vertically and hanging it off the side of my welding table helped. With the first two layers welded together, the whole cage was starting to take form, and I could do a quick fit test. But first I would need the bearing mounts. These are two inch wide by quarter inch thick steel plates with large holes cut in them for the bearings. Bearings need to be held in place and usually use something like a pillow block. I wanted to keep these bearing mounts narrow since I don't have a lot of space to work with which ruled out mounting thick pillow blocks on top of quarter inch plate. But I also didn't want to machine custom pillow blocks out of thick plate steel. Since the bulk of the lateral forces here will be contained by the quarter inch steel plate, I decided cutting everything from plate and stacking it would work well. The main bearing mounting plate is quarter inch steel. Over that are two aluminum water jet cut brackets that fit the bearing OD. And on top of those are two more water jet cut aluminum brackets that keep the bearing in place. And all of that is bolted together. This kept the profile narrow, the cost low, the weight low, and was a quick and easy thing to fabricate. I went back to the CNC plasma cutter and tried to cut the first bearing mount plate. But after a few tries, I realized that the width of the plate between the hole and the edge was just too narrow to plasma cut. So I went ahead and ordered these laser cut from Send Cut Send, and since I can't plasma cut aluminum plate anyway, I went ahead and ordered the aluminum brackets too. With a bearing mounting bracket assembled, now I could go ahead and fit test the engine reduction cage. It was looking pretty good at first, but then the first big problem would reveal itself. So this engine reduction cage came out pretty good, um, but I'm testing the fit testing it in here with the frame and the test engine. The, uh, this is just a hollow engine, but it does have the output shaft and properly bearing mounted. So if you rotate this part, you can see that it drags the engine cage all over the place. The motion is visible. This will be rubber mounted, but that means your engine is doing a lot of work uh, just fighting against these rubber mounts. Um, so I need to get this thing square. This was fabricated years ago. I had another guy do it, and uh, yeah, it seems to have like 50, 60,000 run out. 
Uh, so I got to figure out what to do with that. So let's take it out of there and see what we can do with it. This is why it's so great to fit test everything along the way. Putting this in the lathe with the dial indicator and it looks like it has about a 30 thou run out. Fixing this part was quite a process. First, I put it in the pneumatic press as it looked like the output shaft was just held in with an interference fit. So I've removed these two socket headed cap screws and I'm going to try to push the rest of the shaft out through the sprocket because it looks like all they did was weld this plate to this thing and this plate might have already had this attached to it. So all they did end up doing was welding this a little bit out of concentricity with the base. So possibly I can just cut those welds, push this out, cut those welds and weld it back in there accurately. There it goes, popped right out. I ground out those welds and these are the three resulting segments. Next, I cut off another spline shaft from a different output shaft, faced the end of it, and then drilled a hole through it. Not an easy process given its surface hardening. Okay, I got the piece I just made, quarter inch bolt, it's like four inches long going through it, and uh, the spline shaft female receptacle end attached to it, bolted on. So let's put it in the lathe and see how much runout we have between these two. The next step will be to machine this surface with no run out or as minimal as possible and this area. That gives me two spots to grab onto later. Okay, we got about a little bit less than a thousandth of an inch run out right there. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, looking at this first section, we have about five thousandths run out. Turning that down real quick. Okay, that's pretty nice after one rounding trip. That's uh, one and a half thousandths. I then rounded the surface at the other end. And I got that side down to about a thousandth of an inch run out as well. I checked the other piece, the sprocket holder, and it was looking great towards the base with less than a thousandth of an inch run out. Further out on the shaft though, towards the bearing, it had more of a run out at about five thousandths. But still, that's a heck of a lot better than thirty plus thousandths. I thought at this point I could go ahead and try to reduce that run out by using the heat shrinking from welding to my advantage. I welded it up spot by spot, starting at the opposite side of the highest spot so the warping from the welding would pull the shaft in, and meticulously stepped around the shaft weld by weld, doing a slightly larger weld each time and always opposing the highest spots. This is beautiful, three thousandths. Fully welded, just gotta clean it up, right in front of the bearing, three thousandths of an inch run out. The extent of how well that worked shocked even me. At one point, it actually increased up to nine thousandths, but subsequent welds kept bringing it back in. From over thirty thousandths run out initially to three thousandths, that's awesome, what great progress. The resulting part assembled looks great. But let's go ahead and fit test it and see how it works. Putting it back in the frame with the engine reduction cage, I could freely and easily spin it by hand, even when it's clamped to the frame, which I couldn't turn at all before. So I'd call that a major success. Well, that is it for this video. Once again, I'd like to thank my sponsors, and I encourage anyone who likes this project to help out and become a sponsor with tiers starting as little as a dollar a month. 
every bit helps as you can see from these videos it's a complicated and unusual build but i think necessary to properly take advantage of what the platform and design has to offer keep following the journey as i have many more awesome updates coming out and if you have any questions about the build go ahead and post a comment thank you for watching